I'm really excited to talk to our next guest. Uh, we have Dr. David Yanez with us. Dr. David, it is so good to have you with us tonight. Good to be here. I got to talk to you a little bit before, uh, <clears throat> before we came on tonight. And uh, I could have sat there and talked with you for the next couple of hours. Uh, but I, I like to save some of that excitement uh, uh, for on the air. Because, you know, it, it's just wonderful to hear stories of God moving. Oh, absolutely. I've, I've seen God move. I know God moves. Um, you know, we go to Dominican Republic once a year, sometimes twice. We see God move so much. Mm. But many times we are com kind of complacent when we get back in the States, the faith is is not what we see elsewhere. And God's the same God everywhere. Absolutely. So it, it doesn't, there's nothing ever wrong with God, correct? <laughs> no, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So well, we, What do you think the reason is? Well, I see a lot of, uh, I used to go out there and preach, and I'd come back, and, and I'd have a, a church service, and it just, it just didn't feel the same. And I said, Lord, it, it doesn't need to feel the same. Because it doesn't, uh, what is it, a T.O. Osborne said, it's never about what you feel. Mm -hmm. is what you believe and I would say Lord help me understand this and one day God took me to us to write a sermon and it, and it said um, God is the same in the mission field as he is at home in the USA and I started teaching on that and I found out a lot of people we have to make God our source mm -hmm. um, and we get a cold we get a cough we we start feeling a bump or a lump the first thing we do is call people or call the doctor mm -hmm. God wants us to first call him Right. And it wants that to be an immediate reaction because that's yes. what your faith is. If your faith is to reach for the phone, then you're going to get what the phone results are. But if you have that faith to reach for God instantly, that's where all our faith is. And, and that's where I believe that's where we're, we're in over the overseas. Oh, my overseas. That's all they have. Right. I, I was in India and, you know, it was Africa. I was in Africa and I had a guy. He had pneumonia and he kept complaining and complaining and complaining. The whole time, we're, we're going to go preview where we're going to have the site for the services and the crusade and the pastor's conference. And the whole time, we have anointed men of God standing around this guy. And all he did was complain and complain, oh, I couldn't get to the doctor. Oh, they're closed and I don't have any, any government aid. I have to wait to go to a public clinic and it's not open till Monday. It's the weekend. And we're driving to get it like a Coke and a soft drink or something. And we're pulling over. And when you're on the mission field, that's always good to <laughs> get a Coke or something. Oh, yeah. And then we're driving and then... I just told the driver to stop and go, stop the car. I got out of the car, I opened his door, I said, come out with me. And he looked at me and I go, look, you have three anointed men of God right here that work in miracles, signs and wonders, and not yet did you ask us to pray for you. And all you do is complain about it. I go, we need to change that. Do you believe we can change that? He goes, yes, sir. I go, I'm going to pray for you. We're not going to talk about this again. I don't want to hear about it again. This whole time where you're in my presence, I do not want to hear it. You have to be stern sometimes. Right. You got to let people know what God wants and not what they want. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want to complain and stuff. Well, you know, your words are power. If you keep saying you're sick and you're not going to make it, then you're not going to make it. You're going to be sick. We ended up at the place drinking our, my Coke. I was watching the soccer game on the, on the far part of the restaurant. And then I just heard from behind me. We're there for like an hour. Dr. Yannis, Dr. Yannis, I'm healed, I'm healed. I went back to where he was and he was standing on, almost nearly standing on top of the table with his hands fully raised, just saying, I'm healed, I'm healed. And I don't, I'm not sick. I can bend now. I can breathe now. And so that's, that's where I think that our faith has to be. Even over there, this guy's depending on the doctors. And I'm, I'm not saying medical doctors aren't there. They're there for a reason and use them wisely as well. But I'm saying that we have to first come to God. Right. And, and get in front of him and say, Lord, he has to remember the word of God says that in Nahum, I believe his Nahum 1 7, he knows who trusts in him. Right. He knows. So when you know, when you have God and he knows you, mm -hmm. oh, you can do anything. Exactly. You can believe anything. When you know that God knows you, mm -hmm. that he is with you, those words have to come to life in your walk. They have to become part of your DNA, part of your spiritual DNA. They have to take over your body and they have to believe. You know, you had mentioned a, a story that I, I know most of our believers, uh, most of our watchers know, <clears throat> and it's a story about Daniel waiting for 21 days oh, for yes. that answer. Yeah. You know, when I was reading that in here, uh, it remind, reminded me of something that a lot of times I, I use um, when I'm talking about people waiting on an answer. Yeah. Because we really... I notice a lot of times we trust man more than we trust God. Yep. We see it in our actions, like what you were saying. You know, we need to, the first thing we should do, not to say that doctors are not important. God made the doctors. Yep. He gave them those gifts, and yep. I'm, I'm thankful for them. But that seems to be the first thing that we go for. Absolutely. Like that's our only hope, you yep. know. Uh, <clears throat> I remember um, 
um, <clears throat> when I was reading that story, I was thinking about uh, somebody baking a cake, because uh, this is what I tell our congregation. <laughs> if, <clears throat> if I'm going to be baking a cake and if I'm missing the sugar and I'm missing the butter, and I get on the phone and I call a neighbor a f couple streets down and say, hey, you know, I'm right in the middle of baking a cake. Can you, I need these two ingredients. Can you bring them? And they say, yes, I'll bring them. You know, what I don't do is I don't get in the floor and say, oh, are they really going to bring it? Are they really <laughs> going to show up? Yeah. Is it really going to happen? Mm. I, this cake ain't going to get made. I, I, I go ahead and get everything else prepared while I'm waiting for yep. that to come because I have faith. I have more faith in them than I do God sometimes because yep. God's Word says, you know, you talk about the whosoever, whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Uh, You've read a lot of it. That's I tell it. you, I, I have. It's good. It was a good book. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I ask God for something, a lot of times we don't we don't put as much faith in God as we do somebody coming over and bringing us those ingredients. Yeah, we true. trust them. That's true. Same thing with an insurance company. If I get in a wreck, I trust they're going to pay. Yeah. I don't sit at home saying, are they really going to pay it? Are they really going to pay it? God's probably tired of us treating him less uh, as being less faithful than the insurance person or the neighbor down the street. We need to pray and say, you know what? Yep. It's coming. I mean, I'm going to prepare for it to you come. You mentioned the whosoever, whatsoever. And it's kind of like what you have a contract with the with, with your insurance, whatever insurance company you have. You have a, a contract with them. You paid for this service and you get this. Well, when you look at the whosoever and whatsoever, whenever it's mentioned in the Word of God, it means in, it can say, please insert name here, which says whosoever. So you put your name in there. That's God's contract with you. Yes. And if you're whosoever, you can have whatsoever, and you put within that blank what you what you need in faith. And when you can believe that God will honor, the Bible says He will honor His word. He Absolutely. will He will perform every part of it. And we have to realize it was paid for. You know, our deductible is paid for by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's taken care of. We don't have to worry about it. It's, it can never be earned. It can never you can never get enough merit for it. Right. It's just given freely to whoever mm -hmm. receives it by grace. And Absolutely. So when we keep that in fact, that we can understand that we never earned this. It was mm -hmm. all God's gift to us because right. He loved us. Then we can understand that His Word of God is His contract with us. You know, it says in Exodus that if you will stop, if you will follow me. And I'm just paraphrasing, but in Exodus 15, if you will follow me, you will. I will take the sicknesses away from the, what I've put on Egypt. Mm. If you will follow me, do we follow God? Do we follow him? If it's his guarantee is right there. Everybody asks, does God guarantee to heal you? Of course he does. Yeah. He says it right there in Exodus. If you, if you follow me and you walk in my ways, you get these principles in you then I will take all these afflictions that I've put on Egypt away from you. Yes. And if he, if he guarantees that, then you see Jesus walking and doing the will of God, which is just doing, doing Exodus. He's mm -hmm. just healing people because God wants you healed. You know, uh, even Jesus stood on that whenever he was uh, praying for the woman who had the hump on her back. Mm -hmm. He brought her up and he said, isn't this woman a daughter of Abraham? Ought not she be healed? He was saying, look, it was written, these curses shall not be upon them. Shouldn't she be? Yeah. Ought she, she be healed? And, yeah. You know, that's one thing that's so good about God is he is a king. Yep. And, you know, a lot of times we sit there. Have you ever asked God, why don't you talk to me? Why don't you talk to me? A lot of times people young in their faith say that. And sometimes even later on when they feel like they're alone. And, you know, I feel like a lot of times God, we don't hear him saying a lot of stuff because he is a king. If he ever says something, he has to do it mm -hmm. because he's a faithful God. Absolutely. But you know what? He has said so much in this word, Dr. De uh, oh. Dr. Yanez. If we could just realize, hey, like you said, it's a contract that he's made. Yep, absolutely. It's his word. Absolutely. You know, th that's why he said in, in, uh, uh, in Isaiah, he said, command ye me. You know, he said that because he said, look, it's my word. I mm -hmm. want you to believe it so much that you tell me, look, this is what you said. And I know that you're faithful. And he'll always answer it. Oh, Amen. absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, let's get into this. Um, <clears throat> Man, we could sit here and talk for uh, several hours. It's fine, hours. whatever you want to do. <clears throat> uh, how can we change the atmosphere around us to an atmosphere of faith? That, that is something that each one of us are responsible for. We're responsible for our household. We're responsible for where we work at. We're responsible for how our attitude is when we go in a place. We're responsible of how we come to God. It's, it's so when you get hit with something, what's the first thing that hits you? Fear, mm -hmm. doubt. Those are the first things the devil attacks you with. So we have to be able to stand in God's promises and start changing the atmosphere around us, start believing and start reciting the scriptures, start pronouncing them over your life and make things change. Because if we allow the atmosphere of fear, you're going to get what fear gives you. Yeah. Anything you, fear, you feed fear or you feed faith, mm -hmm. you're going to get whichever one you feed. So if you're fe feeding fear, you're going to get the results of fear. But if you feed faith, 
with, I believe you can do this, Lord. I, I stand on this scripture. I walk in faith, not by sight. If you start walking like that, your atmosphere is going to be changed. You're going to change other people's atmospheres. You're going to change other people's, where they, where they live and where they're at. You know, and I'm, I'm glad this is, um, we're talking about this because a lot of people want to see God move. They want to see miracles. Oh, they yes, want to see, definitely. Yeah. They, 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 they want to see the power of God. And a lot of times people have had an experience like that, but then it's just like after that experience, they get in these dry places and they're thinking, what happened? What has changed? <laughs> uh, tell us, when did you begin experience, experiencing a, a deeper revelation of healing and seeing that in your life? I think when I was probably in the military, I started seeing when I was 19 or 20, I, I would see healings and miracles. But it wasn't until when I got out that I went and prayed for this. Uh, I went to a church service. Nobody knew me there. Nobody knew me there except for my sister and my future brother-in-law. And they, the pastor invited all the young ministers to come up. He was always a good encourager. His name's Bron Barkley. He, he always encouraged all of us to come up and, and pray. So I went up there and I knew, I knew him. I knew him, but I didn't know anyone else but my sister and my brother-in-law. And I went up there to pray and everybody else, everybody knew. So, you know, you're a young man of faith. People know who you are. That They were their home church. All their lines were packed. They were just packed. I'm over there standing, crickets. You can hear crickets behind me. <laughs> and there's Nothing's happening at all. And uh, finally, someone tugs on my shirt, and it's a real short lady. And I, I reached over, and I say, how can I help you? And then she goes, could you pray for me? I'm like, well, you know, by default, she chose me because I go, well, uh, how about those lines? They're, they're pretty big. <laughs> I mean, well, they're, they look like they're doing good. I mean, people are falling and everything. She goes, I have to go to work. I don't have time for that. And she goes, can you pray? And I said, sure. And I go, can I, what do you want me to pray for? She said, well... Um, it's unspoken. So that even makes it more difficult. So <laughs> I was like, Lord, just bless her, touch her, Father, heal her body, whatever she needs, my sister needs. I agree with her this moment. And then we then went over there and, and she just looked at me and goes, that's it? <laughs> go, that's all I got, darlings. I'm sure I know God healed you. I know God's touched you. And she goes, oh, well, I can't go to those lines. All right, I'll see you later. And <laughs> she just took off. <laughs> well, well, I guess it's all right. Yeah, it's six it. months later, six months later, um, I'm at my sister's wedding and someone jumps on my back. It was that short little lady and I pulled her down. I said, hey, I remember you. And she's like, yeah, let me tell you what God did. And I'm like, tell me. And she goes, you know, all my life, all my life, when I get out of bed, my, my feet were like this, I guess kind of like fat, like, mm. and she goes, she had to get special shoes just to fit her, her foot, like molded into it. She said she'd have to get on her stomach, crawl on her knees mm. and lift herself up. So this is why it was unspoken. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah, she was embarrassed about it. And then, so she said every single time I would have to do that every single time. She goes, after you prayed for me, she goes, do you know that I was brushing my teeth and I looked back at, in the morning, I brushed my teeth and I looked back at my bed and I got on my knees and cried because the first time ever in my life that I walked from my bed to, to my sink and my feet were normal and I went to go buy shoes the very same day. <laughs> she went oh to go buy a lot of shoes. Oh my goodness, yeah, So God. after that, I just knew God had something special. And, you know, God's, I was called to be a healing minister, prophesied before I was born. Um, they prophesied over me that I was a healing evangelist and I was in travel and preached the gospel and, and I would travel around the world. So I knew that was on me at that time. Uh, what are creative miracles and when do you use them? Oh, creative miracles. That's an awesome. We can go hours on creative miracles. <laughs> creative miracles. I mean, look at it. Jesus, water into wine. Mm. Water into wine. Would you have thought of that? Mm. I mean, I could probably pour some Kool-Aid in it, but right. I mean, it's like water into wine. You look at Paul. Paul, I call Paul the original TV evangelist. Why? Because he took what we're doing here and he took the atmosphere of faith and he took an apron and tore it in pieces. Mm. And he's put the same atmosphere that we have here. He put it in every single little house, little streetway, wherever they sent the aprons and people were delivered and people were healed, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bible also says that, that God did special miracles. Was God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Yeah. And that was one of them. And then you look at Elijah. Elijah, man, he was probably most, the most radical creativeness, going to the, 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 the water and touching it with his staff for the, for the ax to float. Oh, and, yeah. and then doing, I mean, then Elijah laying on a body until it comes back to life. Right. A little boy just laying on his bike. Today you probably get a few you know, questions. That's exactly <laughs> I thought about that before. Like if somebody had a, a dead child there and I said, yeah. I'm going to lay upon, upon the yeah. body and spread my arm, they'd say, no, you're no, not. No. And, so, you yeah. know, but, but the child sneezed seven yeah. times. Those are, those are creative miracles. I had a creative miracle in India when I was coming through. Uh, they were they're stopping everybody. In India, they stop. you got to stop. They had like hundreds of cars pulled over. I told my driver, I were already late. I told my driver, just go, just go. And then, so we, we, I made him drive in the middle of the highway, you know, 45 or whatever, and we're cruising to the, to the stop where they have the, the soldiers where they're patrolling everybody. 
and they just look at us like we're crazy. I put, tell everybody put their belts on. They don't wear belts in India, so I already got them confused. <laughs> I didn't even roll down my window. The guy's banging on my window, and I looked at him, and I go, this is not the car you're looking for. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my Jedi moment. <laughs> right. And then, and then he looked at me, and he got mad, and he hit the window with his gun, and then the guy behind him got him by the shoulder and said, this is not the car we're looking for. Oh. <laughs> and then we just, he goes, let him go. We just took off. And as soon as we cleared it, I said, go, go, go quick. But um, that moment, the driver, he's been driving me for like six years now. He's Hindu. He's not even saved. And he, out of all the miracles, blind eyes open, deaf ears open, crooked hands growing, feet growing. He said, that was his best miracle. He's just like, I know there's a God because you got us through that line. <laughs> he was all excited. That miracle was for him. Oh, that man. created a miracle. But it's allowing the spirit of God and just allowing your creativity to put faith behind it to make something happen. That's basically what creative miracles are. I want to come back to this. We got a lot more questions I want to get into. And, you know, speaking of being over in India, something you said in the beginning of this was so good. And uh, I should have brought it up in the very beginning because you said, you know, over there they have six million gods, oh, yeah. Hindu. And you said sometimes when you're around that, that uh, people that have that many gods, God wants to flex, flex his muscles, his muscles. Yes. and show who's really God. Yep. You know, we need some more of the experiences like Elijah had with the fire and mm -hmm. the 450 prophets of Baal. Yes. You know, I'm ready to see that break out in this nation. Um, we were talking about creative miracles, you know, and mm -hmm. when do you use them? Um, I, you know, I think maybe there are probably people at home, uh, I've, I've seen it personally, where people want to see something, and so, you know, they... They maybe imitate something they see in the Bible, which God still moves in those oh, ways. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, if somebody's not speaking, I don't want to just go up and grab their tongue and loosen <laughs> it from them unless I'm supposed to, you know. Yes. So what would you tell people? You know, how, how do these things happen? Does God speak to you? Does he prompt you? Uh, you know, give some insight into that and how God moves through Sure. You. For me, it, it comes through a prompting. It just, it's my spirit sees the situation where I see the situation in the natural, but I'm really seeing it in the supernatural. And then it's, I, in, I innovate. I, I just, it's just my body moves. There's three, three of them I could go to right now that I could tell you that happened in India. One was this lady with a crooked hand. Her hand was completely crooked. It was bent in all places. And I was drinking a Sprite. Service was over. We prayed for everybody. I'm, I'm cooling off in the, in the underneath the fan inside of the church because it's hot in, uh. in India. No, never go in March. Never go in March. <laughs> go before March. And I'm drinking my Sprite. And then, and then this lady comes up and my, my Bishop Mike's with me, uh, Michael Renteria. He travels with me when we go over and and he, he's like, you got this one? You got this one, D? Because <laughs> he's eating all mangled and stuff. And I looked at it, I'm like, yeah, sure. And immediately, I was just prompted in just a normal reaction for me. I just went like this with my hand. And I was like, put your hand through that. And she looked at me, and I go, translator. <laughs> the translator tells her, and then all of a sudden, you just hear when my hand's like that, you just hear snapping and popping and cracking and just mm. God honored that unction. No one told me how to do it. I had never seen that happen before, you know, for mm -hmm. listening to other ministers and stuff. But I, I just moved in the moment. And, and that's where creative miracles start. You have to, you have to move in the moment. It's just something right. that you can't, there's never a, a pre-thought of it. It's the spirit prompting. Yeah, you, you look at Jesus. Jesus mm -hmm. said, you know, well, the main thing is, and I think this is one of the main ingredients, you take what you have. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you use what you have to get the results that you need. The bread and the fish. The bread and the fish, the, the water and the wine. And that, just, that miracle right there was just, a, I just love that miracle mm -hmm. because it wasn't even his time. Right. It wasn't even his time, and I'm, I'm writing another book called that, <laughs> not my time, but that it wasn't his time, but he still moved supernaturally. He still moved on behalf of his mother, and, and he just seen, okay, there's water. Mm -hmm. you know, there's pots. Fill them up with water, and it'll be fine. Creative miracles. Um, another one was this, like you were mentioning about pulling a tongue or whatever. There was, there was a, a lady, a young lady coming to us from a distance. Right after I prayed for that woman with the crooked hand, I came outside. And I seen um, a lady just walking, and I could see it from a distance. She was walking like this was her hand, literally, for this foot. And she was crawling to us, and she was way off. And then my, my uh, translator, my, my crusade organizer, he's my translator. He's like the best one to, in India. And he said, let's go to her. <laughs> and I'm like, I looked and said, nah, her faith is making her whole. And everybody thought I was cruel. And I could have went over there and drove with the van and met her, but I stood there until, it, I mean, it took a good 20 minutes for her to come to where we're at. Mm -hmm. And I stood there, and then sweaty, dirty, beautiful young lady just stood up. Her foot was right here where her knee was. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And you know, she had one long, one normal leg and then her foot ended right there, but she had her foot there. And she looked at me and there's so many things like that you see overseas, it just looks, it's, it's almost, you know, it's hideous a lot of stuff mm -hmm. you see. And it's like I looked and, and, and I go, what do you need from God? I didn't look at the foot, I didn't look at the, the situation, how bad it was. I just looked at, what do you want? Because God wants to give you what you want. And she said, I believed if I can make it to the man of God on my own power, and if, if I can stand in front of him, God will heal my leg. I was like, okay. Just grabbed her leg and I yanked it. I just yanked a good yank. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even think if she was going to fall over or if people were going to scream. I just went in the creativeness, just grabbed it and yanked it. That's just what I did. And it was, a, it was just, a, like, again, a reflex, mm -hmm. an action that my, my, my mentalness just, just took over, spiritualness took over. It's kind of like a combination of both. It's creativity, it's faith, it's both. You know, it, it is, you know it's the spirit prompting you because, yeah. uh, you know, that the same thing happens when a... Uh, whenever God uses me to uh, do a word of knowledge, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a uh, word of wisdom, uh, sometimes when I begin to prophesy about something like, you know, some people may think, well, he must have had this thought up, you know, some of the stuff he's saying. I'm sitting there listening myself because it, <laughs> it's like if I sit there and think too long, yeah. I'll mess up. Yep. It's like I can't. I ha Like you're you saying, just, I have it to flows. act. It and flows. it's flowing out. And I'm sitting there listening. It's like I'm sitting there listening going, Wow, this is. I need this. Yes. You know, people don't realize a lot of times when, when we're preaching and when we're teaching, I'm hearing this stuff and some of the stuff that God does and He's speaking because I believe He speaks through us. Yes. It's it's helping me because it's Him and I'm thinking, man, I wish I could get a pen and write this down. Absolutely. You know, because it, it is just amazing because I know yeah. it's Him. So you know, and you wish you had your phone recording right? right? Yeah. yeah. Like I, I have stopped it. before and I say, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> and I've had to write a note yeah. because I'm like, I, I need to remember yeah. this afterwards. But, you know, that's the thing. People need to trust the Spirit of God it, because yep. it, he, it says that he see, searches the deep things of God. He knows the mind of God. So we need to listen to him when yep. he prompts us. And when her leg, when I pulled her leg, the dust cleared and her, she was standing on both feet. Praise so, God. So, I mean, God, God does the miraculous when you let him to. And then there, one other creative thing was we had, tw we were about to do our healing service and we're, we already had about maybe seven churches. We do, when I go there, I do about 10 healing services, and, and that's uh, five, six days straight. Then we have a big crusade. So we're constantly busy doing that. I bring enough ministers to, to handle it. But we're on, the, on our, I think, our sixth or seventh one. And, I, and my spirit just felt, I want all the blind people to come forward. <laughs> I didn't even know if there was a blind person there. It's just my spirit said it. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, 25 blind people came forward. And I looked at them, and all the ministers were about to jump off. And oh, I start praying. I'm like, no. God's doing this. And I just looked at him for a second and I said, okay, I'm going to walk by you and all the ministers are going to follow me. And when I get back on the stage, I'm going to count to three and then we will, we will, we will, your eyes will open. And sure enough, I, we all walked by, I went up there and I said, count to three and nobody opened their eyes. I go, oh, translator. <laughs> and he counted to three and then 24 eyes opened instantly. Praise 24. God. And these guys have been blind for, since their birth or accidents or whatever. All of them got healed except for one. And the one that didn't get healed was the one that said, this was a gift from God. You're sick. This is not a gift from God. And she was an evangelist and she was a preacher. And I go, honey, how much more, if you can actually get the Bible and, and read it, can you help people? And how much more, if you're seeing where you're going, can you get the place faster to preach? And, she, mm -hmm. and uh, I go, look, okay. And all my ministers jumped on her and started to pray. I'm like, no, guys, save your energy for someone that wants it. Exactly. Because we got a tent full of people that have not mm -hmm. even been prayed for. This is the first. This is the first line of people that we prayed for, and uh, I gave her her little staff, and I gave her her Bible, and I said, "Go ahead, you can go now." And she left, and we prayed for everybody else, and a lot of healings happened that night. I spoke to a guy one time uh, at a gym, and he had all he was naming all these things that was wrong, and yeah. I said, "You know, God can heal you," and we I sat there and talked to him for 20 minutes. I wasted 20 minutes of my mm. life because no matter what I gave him, he was starting to get aggravated because. He was, he had so, he had a lot of faith. Yeah. He had faith that he was supposed to be that way because every scripture I'd give, he'd explain why this should be. And yeah. sometimes it doesn't happen. And yeah. you know what? You've got to, we've got to be like Jesus sometimes and say, you know what? I, I can't do many yes. wonderful miracles. Yes. You know, the Bible even says, it says he left there and did not do many. It was quantified. Yep. There were supposed to be many and they didn't happen yep. because of the faith. You, you got to have, you, you have to have faith. And one of the scriptures that I love says, you know, the same gospel was preached to them, but it wasn't mixed with faith. Mm. So and that's where a lot of people, when they're inside a service or, or you see them disappointed leaving and they weren't healed. And it's because somehow, some way, 
Just like the scripture says about the birds taking the faith, out, you know, the seeds off the ground. And that's what happens. They just don't mix it. They don't mix the faith mm -hmm. that they need to mix into it to get the, to, to ignite your faith is what I call it. Now the woman that came in your line by herself and, you, and, she, and she said, oh, well, is that it? Okay. Now she didn't immediately get her healing. Sometimes people will leave and think, well, I didn't, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. But there are delayed miracles. There right? are delayed miracles. And the first thing I tell you is I always look at Daniel. Always look at, at Daniel praying and always look at the, the, the time that he waited 21 days. 21 days. And the three things you got to remember is this. The Bible says in that scripture that immediately when you put your knees on the ground, I heard your prayers and I sent your answer. Yes. So the angel was dispatched immediately, as soon as, his, soon as he prayed. So that's number one. Immediately the angel goes to, to you. The other thing is that the devil can't steal your blessing. What your faith released is yours. It has your spiritual DNA on it. It has your, your faith in it. God released it to you, and it, he didn't release it to anyone else but you. And he can't take it. In 21 days he tried to take it. He couldn't take it. He could delay it, but he couldn't, he couldn't take it. And then the third thing was that the, that the angel itself knew where to go. It knew, it, it, it knows your address. He knows where to take it. It, do, it, no matter what, it may be delayed, but you know what? He never, he's gonna, he knows how to find you, how to take it to you, how to bring it to you. It's coming. It's coming. I used to have an, a youth pastor, he always used to say that God knows your address. Well, I know he knows your email address, your cell phone, your Twitter handle. He knows all that stuff. So he right. can, he knows how to get a hold of you when he got to get a hold of you. Absolutely. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I had this, um, <clears throat> I had this place on the back of my knee. <clears throat> and my grandmother, she believed in healing her whole life. I mean, I was raised believing in healing because they didn't have a lot of money. You know, sometimes you just, you needed God. You had to have God. You had no other choice, mm -hmm. which is really a blessing sometimes. Yeah. And uh, I remember two years, I, I got to where I couldn't even bend it. I was about eight years old. I couldn't bend my knee all the way up because it hurt. There's a big gray knot right there. And I remember we went to the doctor and he spoke to my mom and I heard something about cancer. I remember we went home at night. I, we were going to have another visit with him two days later. My grandmother got some oil, and she laid her hand on the back of my leg, and my mom did. Man, I tell you what, I was praying because I, I was <laughs> eight. I was scared to death yeah, of surgery. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I'm sitting there praying. We prayed for 20 minutes. They took their hands off of it. Guess what? It was still there. We went over. I got some ice water, and my grandmother said, you know, Nathan, God can heal you. It can happen before your visit. And I said, but I want it tonight, and I believe it can happen. And she said, well, let's pray again. We prayed for 10 more minutes. This thing had been there for, for two years and we get, was getting bigger. bigger. After two minutes, I'm sitting there still praying. I felt their hand come off, and I'm still praying. All of a sudden, I heard my mom and my grandmother screaming, praising God. And I looked back there. It was completely Amen. gone. Amen. You know, that... It, that touched my life. Nobody can ever take that away from me. I had, in, as an adult, and this has been just a few years ago, I had a mole right here on my head, and I went to the doctor, and he said, we need to take that off. He said, that concerns me. We're going to take it off mm -hmm. next week. And I said, okay. I went home, and I looked in the mirror, and I said, Lord, I remember. I said, I remember what you did when I was a boy, and I remember many other things that you've done. I said, I want this thing to go. And I began to speak to it, and I said, I said, Mole, <laughs> I said, he said, speak to the mountain. Speak to the so, mountain. So, you know, I'm, I was speaking yep. to it. Mm -hmm. So I said, Mole, you have to go. I have authority over you, and you have to go. I didn't think another thing about it. The next day I come home and I felt an itch on the side of my head and I did like that. The thing crumbled off in my Amen. hand. Amen. Amen. I called the doctor and they, I said, I want to cancel that appointment. They said, uh, the doctor says you need to come in. You know, we need to reschedule. You've got to have this done. I said, listen, I prayed. God healed me. It fell off. They said, oh, well, that's wonderful. Call us if you need anything. <laughs> next time I went in, he looked and he said, well, I'll be. <laughs> you know, God is a healer. You know, he that's is, what I love about healer. this book because mm. people, you know, faith cometh by hearing, cometh hearing by the word of God. Yes. But, you know, the words of our testimony, we, we just, we have no yep, idea how, sometimes how it affects people. And so that's one thing that's so good about this book. Dr. Yanez, tell us, I know that all the healings that you have seen, uh, you've had to have had a need for healing yourself. Oh, absolutely. It's when this book started, uh, when I started actually putting down all my thoughts and, and all the healing stories together, I was going through a healing that I needed. I, had, I guess my rear end or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> glutus, I don't know what the, po the politically correct thing to say. That's all there. right. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was in so much pain on the left side. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't even drive. And I, you know, I work mainly from home, do a lot of, a lot of stuff on a phone, on the internet. And 
I couldn't even sit in my office. I mean, I'm talking about six months of pain. Wait a minute, you're a healing minister. You're supposed to just <laughs> say it and it's gone. <laughs> Absolutely, and it was just a, it was a test of faith. Yes. And I just left it in God's hand. But you know what? I never stopped what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was still getting on the planes. I was still going to mission trips. I'll be, I'm on an 18-hour flight to India in pain, and I, I'm going. Even if I'm not healed, I'm going. I'm still doing his work. When I preach, no pain. <laughs> when I finished, I looked like Yoda going to the room. <laughs> it was it was bad, and then and then that was healed instantly. And then I was helping my brother a couple of a couple of months later. I was helping him move a safe, and and uh, and for some reason my leg got tweaked on that, and I tore my ACL. And what and that was, I think that was worse than uh, than having the other pain, because now I'm I'm walking like a turtle trying to catch planes. I'm like looking at those little carts going by, the people carts going by, and I'm like, can I get one of those? And, and I'm preaching, and I'm, in, I'm in Louisiana, and I'm preaching, and everybody in there, eight or nine knee healings immediately. I just touched their knees, healed, I could hear it snap. One lady, did you hear it all crack back and forth? And I'm like, come on, come on. <laughs> Touching in between, just, yeah. okay. <laughs> and again, I look perfect going through there praying for people, but then when the lights are off and I'm heading to my room to go back to go to sleep, I'm like, in pain mm -hmm. and I just kept going I kept moving it wasn't until um, I was actually in a conference in Africa and I was in my friend said David it's getting worse you need to go and see a doctor I go nope I already told the Lord he's going to heal this one I go I'm not going to the doctor I'm not going to go back and I don't want them to cut into it or do anything I don't need to be in therapy I need to keep moving for the Lord and I, I went and I preached a conference and it was the last healing the last healing week that we're at in Kenya and I'm preaching and I feel a little better then by the third night it was even getting better and then by the fifth night, I was preaching, and I didn't have to take any time or anything like that. And, and I, just, I, just jumped up, I just jumped up, and I could tell I was completely healed. I was jumping around on the stage. I had my hands lifted. I didn't feel the pain no more. And I did the thing you're not supposed to do. I jumped off the stage. <laughs> and I'm like, I just got my knees healed. And I'm like, yes, hey, he, he said, prove me. Like, you were and I'm like, you know what? Aren't we grateful for God's grace? <laughs> we're grateful for his grace. Because he, he has grace on us. He has mercy. And I'm grateful that he has that mercy and grace because I should have done that. And, but my, my knee was still healed. So praise God. Amen. So I walked through those. And, and those were, for me personally, was a challenge because I, I made up my mind. I'm going to keep doing healing services. You know, I could have said, oh, I'm not going to do healing services no more because they're not even they're not even healing me. And I could have slowed down, and not do anything. Mm -hmm. And then but I said, nope, I keep preaching. I keep going because you have to prove it to God that he will pour out a blessing on you. Yeah. As I tell everybody, prove it to him that he will pour it out a blessing to you. He wants to bless you so much. You know, I think it's uh, a lot of times when we go through those times, because sometimes people wonder, well, you know, why am I going through this? And I. Uh, uh, Hazel, we, do you mind checking one more time for uh, prayer requests? Because uh, we want to get all these in that we can and touch them. But, you know, you know I, I always look back at the story of Abraham and Isaac. Uh, you know, him, he's waited. He waited 25 years because yep. it was 75 up to 100 when he finally had him. And then now he's a child who can talk and he's telling him, where, you know, where are we going, Father? Where, we don't have a sacrifice. But he had to trust God. And God wasn't going to have this carry out. It, it doesn't change who God is, but it, he had to show Abraham and, because he knew what Abraham was capable of, mm -hmm. but he had to prove to him that this is how much you believe. Because sometimes unless we go through something, we don't realize how much we really trust Absolutely. him. Absolutely. You know, I think that uh, sometimes God will put us under pressure in order to put the squeeze on our life in order yep. to get the juice out of it. To yep. say, I'm going to see how much glory I can get out of this. Oh, and you know, we, we would stay in the comfort zone all the time if we could. Yep. But he put, he allows us, I say, he allows us to get in those times of testing so that we stand and you know, at the end of it, our faith is higher. Why? Because we stood and said, I will not give up. When you Absolutely. come out, you're that much stronger because yep. you said, I, I stayed in and I believed, I believed and God did it. And it makes it so much easier the next time and the next time. And then you have bigger and bigger things yep. happen. Man, yep. you know, Your faith it, has to grow. A, a, absolutely. Um, tell us uh, what's so important about forgiveness being tied to our healing. And Jesus, uh, Jesus told us the, the lesson about leaving your, if you have unforgiveness for anyone, that leave your gift at the altar and go back and have, make peace with them, forgive them and come back and then present your gift to God. The blessings of God is tied to your forgiveness, your healing, your finances. And if you don't forgive, um, you, don't, you don't, like I tied, uh, was a June Hunt on my show, and she said, you don't have to forgive. We all have a choice, but it's better for you to forgive. It's better for you to forgive. Your life will be blessed when it's forgiven. I've seen some miserable people who 
want to hold on. Oh. And a lot of times they'll say, well, you know, I, I forgive them, but I ain't forgetting. They really haven't forgiven because it's you can see it in their life and it's affecting them. You know, I've, I've seen people who do not want to forgive. They have something against somebody and it's bothered them. And it may be something so small. And they go home and I've they've told me that they've stayed up and just... And been in turmoil. Mm -hmm. You know what the other person's doing? Snoring. <laughs> They're happy. That everything's Probably fine. watching a movie, eating yeah, popcorn. Exactly. <laughs> they, they, you know? they don't even remember it. Oh, what were you mad about? <laughs> the enemy loves to torment God's people. Yep. He, he, he really does. Um, <clears throat> we only have a few minutes. I tell you, there are so many stories in this book. Uh, can you tell everyone where they can get a copy of this? Oh, anywhere uh, books are sold. And you can definitely go visit David uh, Yanez Ministries.com. And you can, it has links there that you can purchase the book as well. You know, this book is not just about the healings that he's seen, even though it has a lot of it in there. There is a lot of wisdom in this book as far as uh, the operation in, in, a, uh, in the ministry, operation during services, acting decently in order. Uh, <clears throat> there's a story in here about a woman who was going to commit suicide and had all of her needs met. There, there's a story about a storm. Man, I wish we had another hour. <laughs> there is so much stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I highly recommend you to get this book because it will increase your faith. I really believe it as you see these things. Um, we've got about one minute. You have sent in your prayer request, and I believe God is going to touch these tonight. Uh, somebody needs financial help. We've got people who uh, have uh, need their, their foot healed. There is a number of things that are in here. They need a uh, family salvation, prosperity, uh, ears need healing. There's a lot of stuff in here. God knows your need. He knows what you need. And I'm going to let Dr. Yanez uh, touch these, and he's going to pray and agree. Amen. Heavenly Father, we're going to do what I do with my healing services, and it's the very last thing we do. It takes just a minute. We're going to say right now to our mountains, whatever mountain you have in your life, whether it's healing, whether it's finances, whether it's a job that you need, or whether it's a family member, you speak to that mountain. You insert that mountain's name in there. And you, I want you to say right now, I am whosoever, and I believe that I can have whatsoever. And I believe that everything that I need, God can provide. I speak to this mountain right now, and I command it. Now say the mountain's name out loud, whatever it is. I command it to leave in Jesus' name. Father, we proclaim healing, miracles, blessings because you say our hands are blessed when we are part of your kingdom that our hands are blessed and they prosper lord we thank you for it and we bless you for it in jesus name father bring the miracles that are needed that are in these papers and everybody at home says amen